workers at Kroger owned grocery stores in Colorado going on strike. Terry Moran is tracking the latest on the new walkout by fed up workers. Good morning, Terry. This morning, more than 8,000 cashiers and store stockists and custodians and baggers and other grocery workers, they're all out on strike at King Superstores. They're seeking better wages and benefits and a safer work environment at King Supers, which is owned by Kroger's. Don't shop here. The so-called year of the worker presses on into 2022 as more than 8,000 employees at Kroger owned King Supers are now on strike in Colorado. Who's got the power? We got the power. It seems like the people just don't matter. They just want their profit. Nearly half of all respondents said they could not afford to eat healthy and balanced meals in the past year, while a sobering 34% said they'd skipped or reduced the size of meals because they couldn't afford food. 15% have used food banks or government food assistance to help pay for groceries. 63% of respondents said they did not earn enough money to pay for expenses every month, and 14% said they had experienced homelessness in the past year. There's a new labor movement on the rise, and the latest evidence of that is the Kroger strike that's happening right now in Colorado, where workers are on strike demanding higher wages and better benefits from their employers. Now, the employer, boldly enough, said that they came in with a deal, that deal just being a few cents higher than the minimum wage in Denver. The workers rejected that deal, and they're still on strike because they say that the proposed wages and benefits simply weren't enough. Now, the president of King Supers, which is owned by Kroger, he claimed that the union was, quote, putting politics before people and preventing us from putting more money in our associates' pocket, creating more disruption for our associates, their families, and Coloradans, rather than negotiating a peaceful resolution, is irresponsible and in undemocratic. Now, this is an absolutely ridiculous thing for this person to say. Now, why is this? See, business owners always try to paint it as though that they're being generous. And look, they offered this mild raise. Now, it doesn't add up to the $2 an hour extra that were taken away for hazard pay because of the pandemic. But they still seem to think that magically this is just enough for workers. But we need to understand something. In Denver, the average rent is almost $2,000 a month. And at $16 an hour, a worker would only have $500 left for the rest of the month. And that's not including taxes. For Colorado as a whole, the average rent is about $1,100. Meaning that even if these people lived outside of Denver, they would still only have about $1,000 left over for the rest of all of their expenses after rent. And so them trying to claim that $16 an hour is enough for their workers is absolutely pathetic, especially when you consider the fact that right now they are experiencing record profits. But business owners will always try to claim that, oh, it's not a peaceful resolution, you're on strike, how dare you? But then turn around and use shady tactics like what they were using, where recently they've replaced their in-house shopping service for Instacart. And this is exactly the problem that we're seeing right now, where some of these jobs that are supposed to be done by full-time employed workers are being done by these contract workers for these giant tech companies. They're basically trying to find a way to disconnect the costs of goods from the cost of labor. Now, why are they doing this? You see, once upon a time, it used to be that if you employed somebody, it was expected that you were responsible for their well-being as a person. Now, the first step in eroding that norm was done during the early industrial period with the normalization of hourly wages. You see, it used to be that workers would be paid per item that they created, which means that they would be able to negotiate rates to make sure that their cost of living was actually calculated in the cost of producing goods. When you switch to hourly wages, effectively, you are renting a person without regard for their ability to survive. The whole purpose of hourly wages as an idea was to separate the cost of labor from the prices and goods and services which allowed giant companies to make even greater profit margins. Now what we are seeing with the technology age is we are seeing that evolve one step further, where wages are even more disconnected from actual productivity, profits, and costs of goods, which means these companies are able to rake in even greater and greater profits and claim that they have no responsibility for the workers whatsoever. And this is why the resurgence of this labor movement is exactly what we need to see in the United States of America. With more workers going on strike 
demanding higher wages, demanding that they be respected as human beings that need to have their cost of living considered, has a potential to fundamentally change the economy in the United States of America. The one point that is very frustrating about this, however, is the failure of Democrats to mobilize and capitalize on this issue. Democrats across the board are fundamentally failing to be active and engaged in this new labor movement, which is a good sign that these Democrats, for the most part, are on board with the giant corporations and are reluctant to see workers fighting for higher wages. Ben Carolla with Rebel Headquarters. You can catch my show Galaxy Brain on the Young Turks Twitch channel every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. You can follow me on Twitter if you want to stay up to date with my content.